everyone, it's Alejandra here and welcome to my channel. So today I wanted to talk about how I knew that I was transgender and the reason I bring this up is because I've been getting a lot of um, feedback from my last messages and that's one of the main questions that I've been getting and I definitely feel like I touched on it but very lightly but I wanted to make this um, video just to go a little bit more deeper into the topic. Growing up, obviously I could tell you all the basic stuff, you know, but I'm not basic, so um, yes, I played with Barbies, and yes, I always felt different and this and that, but more than anything, I feel like I had a stronger connection to the women side of my family, and I've always just felt as one of them. I can say that I can't specifically know one event or one experience that I had that I was just like, oh, I'm transgender, that's what it is. But I can definitely tell you experiences and, you know, situations that I feel like have helped me identify myself as transgender, now looking back in retrograde, just because I feel that it's something that happens within time, and some people, it happens a lot faster, some people take them a little bit longer. Um, we definitely have a bunch of a variety of age ranges within the community, but I definitely can say that there is not two people who have the same story. Maybe similar situations or similar events that might have happened, but I can bet that everybody has their own personal experience and kind of came about finding out little by little or you know, over time. So I would like to um, add that this is my experience and these may be similar to other people who identify as transgender. These definitely are things that I feel like have made me feel like I can identify as being transgender and I feel like I can reflect back and be like, wow, that makes a lot more sense. Okay, so, so first off, I wanted to start off um, with more of these childhood memories and experiences and situations that I have experienced. I always wanted to be the Pink Power Ranger, but aside from that, I have always wanted to be any girl character in any video game or movie or anything that I would watch or see, and I feel like I never really understood why, but I always wanted to be the girl character. I remember one time specifically, and I'm sorry, Dad, but I'm gonna put you on blast. I remember, I think we were watching Pocahontas, and I wanted to be Pocahontas so bad, and I was telling my dad, and my dad whipped out the chancla, and you know, shit got real. And, um, yeah, like, I got a good beating for wanting to be Pocahontas, and I remember that, and I, there is a lot of things that, you know, traumatize you or just stick to your, um, memory, and you are just, like, you know, can't seem to really pick and choose which memories, but I think these are the memories that really, you know, you reflect on later on in life and it really make you realize that, you know, everything makes a lot of sense and this is why things are the way they are. Um, so I also remember, okay, um, I remember telling my sister, I have two brothers and two sisters, um, well now there's three sisters, so, um, yeah, but I have two brothers and two sisters. I was the second born, um, so it was a boy, girl, boy, girl, girl. Okay, so my sister, Paulina, she, um, I remember she was always a lot more tomboyish and would remember, you know, always feeling like we were in the wrong bodies because I was always so, um, feminine and I always felt like anything that, you know, they would want for her is what I wanted for myself. And I never expressed that because I always knew that for some reason that I, that was not possible. Always remember to this day and I never really, like all these things, like I don't, it's just so funny because now that I'm where I'm at in my life, I'm just like, whoa, all this is so crazy, you know? Like, this is crazy how like I remember these things and these things are the things that I feel like I needed 
for right now, you know, like, <sighs> like when I would go to slumber parties and like things like that, I would like get separated from like sleeping with the girls sometimes and I thought that was kind of weird and I never understood really as to why they would do that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I was always allowed to go hang out with the girls and I kind of feel like the parents always caught on and they always thought that I was different. Um, but, um, yeah, they were definitely always still cautious and would, you know, separate me from all the girls, which I thought was really weird, like I said, and I never understood. When we started maturing and, like, going through puberty and things like that, obviously I never, you know, went through that, but at the time I never really thought much of it because I was, well, first of all, I was overweight. I probably was overweight because I was depressed and I was probably depressed because I was you know not maturing how I probably felt but I never understood why I always felt like it had to do more with my sexuality and I always thought because I was attracted to men I always just you know felt like I was a gay man so um yeah I just always felt like that was my I guess way that I victimized myself and um yeah I not till like I was like older did I come to this realization obviously and I feel like all these things that I am now like looking back and reflecting on and really thinking about I feel like not till now I'm like wow this is like more that is why I identify as transgender now is because I feel like all these things are not necessarily they just make more sense to me now you know and it's just like it's not necessarily that I was gay it was more so that I was trans and that I didn't feel comfortable with the sex I was assigned and yeah. Excuse me, but yeah, I just find it funny that it all makes sense now. I started becoming aware of my gender differences at a very young age, and I was never able to really associate them with some type of role model or somebody similar. I just always knew that I was different, and I definitely was more aware of my sexuality before I was of my gender. I always knew since a very young age that I was attracted to men, boys, male, um, whatever you want to call them. But um, yeah, I remember being in elementary school and uh, writing little love letters to boys and just always, you know, having crushes on boys and things like that. And I was always teased throughout all of elementary school because I was gay or, you know, as they would like to call me, gay lord. I never realized that the main, the reason they were bullying me were not so much because I was necessarily gay, it was more so because I had more feminine qualities and definitely presented and acted a lot differently than all the other little boys, so I was definitely an easy target. I never could really tell you how often I would be bullied during elementary school and it was just one of those things that became so common and so um, just happened so repetitively that I think I used a lot of excuses to not go to school sometimes but yeah I definitely experienced a lot of bullying growing up so around the time that the tight pants started coming out I started tucking I think around that time as well because I remember that um, my brother he used to skate and he wore tight pants as well um, but I remember my dad built us a skating ramp and or not us him a skate ramp in the backyard. It was really fucking cool. Um, but there was a lot of cuties all the time at the house. Um, because my brother literally had so many friends and that everybody who would be at the skate park would literally be at my house. And I just noticed that a lot of the boys would wear tight pants and a lot of boys wear tight pants. I'm not saying that gr there are four girls, but I just noticed that they were less preoccupied about worrying about what their crotch looks like than I was and I was just so not comfortable with having a bulge and I really thought that aesthetically that was a lot more appealing to me and I just never really liked it and I seriously have been tucking since I was probably like 13, 14. That's another thing that I realized now looking back, I'm like, wow, that makes a lot more sense. That always looked a lot better for me. And like I said, a lot of these things that I pick up on now were things that at the time I never 
questioned. I just, I just always have been myself and I never really was too worried about why I was doing these things. I just was doing things that made me feel comfortable. I remember when I was doing my first communion, um, because in Catholicism, you do your first communion, you do, or first you get baptized, then you do your first communion, and then you get, I mean, primera comunión, sorry. Um, then you do confirmación, which is a confirmation, but I never got to that level, you know, I was just like, fuck this, but, um, I remember, um, anytime I had to dress up in any formal attire, it used to be a suit, but when I started having my own voice and telling mama, sorry, I did not want to wear a suit, so I always hated, hated, hated wearing a suit, and I always expressed that. I never liked it. <clears throat> I hated the broad, like, disgusting shoulders that, you know, never, the, the suit never was fitted nice or had any type of shape. Um, they were hideous, boring colors. The prints were disgusting. Just, like, all, anything about a suit, so ugly. Didn't like wearing it. Hated it. And I always really would... I would love when I would go shopping with my sisters, my female counterparts. Um, I definitely enjoyed going shopping with them and doing those kinds of things and I seriously like I feel like I was like living through them when we would go shopping for any formal type of attire because I was always, you know, dreading having to wear the suit and always had so much fun when they would go shopping for their dresses and things like that. Um, but like I said, eventually, I don't think I really gave them too much of a choice. Um, at a very young age, I kind of started doing whatever I wanted, and I knew it was not until, I want to say, like, middle school is where I really started noticing that we were not the same, because we then were starting to get split into um, sexes, and this is mostly seen when we're in PE and things like that, and even going to field trips and slumber parties and things like that, I was always split up and I never understood. I always felt like I, I mean, sometimes they were okay. I think some parents caught on and were like, well, this, this, at the time, this boy is not going to do anything, but, you know, you can never be sure, and I mean, for me, Obviously, I never had to experiment, and I've always known that I was into guys more than anything. I definitely um, felt always a lot more comfortable with girls, and like I said, I just never really understood as to why I would be separated, but obviously things became apparent. But yeah, I definitely um, never enjoyed uh, middle school or high school PE just because it was always super, super awkward, and that is one of the things that I wrote down on here is that... Um, when it would come to dressing, I would definitely always come prepared. I would have my shorts and my shirt underneath all my clothes. Um, it was either that or I would go change in a separate bathroom because I would feel so uncomfortable and I would get bullied in there and it was just really, and not even bullied like physically, I never was really physically bullied. I remember in elementary school I was physically bullied, but which is never cool, but yeah, I definitely um, never had to experience any physical type of you know, thank God I've been really blessed to not have to experience that, but definitely I feel that um, the locker rooms were always super uncomfortable and um, guys would just make little comments or like just decide to not want to change next to me or like even sometimes it wasn't even so much that it was uncomfortable for me, it was so uncomfortable for them that would make me uncomfortable. So for me, I just found it easier to just seclude myself from those types of situations and I would just take matters into my own hands. I definitely never did great in PE because I, th it, it, it definitely affected my grades, but I mean, whatever, it's PE, like, nobody needs that. I'm just kidding, it's super important, exercise. So soon after turning 17, I had the urge to lose my virginity for some reason, and I remember it was the week of 16 turning 17, and I, for some reason, really wanted to lose my virginity. It was really weird. But, um, yeah, I lost it, like, seriously a week after I turned 17. So the reason I bring this up is because once I started becoming sexually active, I really was aware of, I guess, the way I 
liked having sex really helped me identify with my gender just because I liked being more of the submissive and I feel like that would be considered more feminine I guess but I think that also I bring it up because um I had encounters with um straight men um and I realized that when I would um have these encounters I would be a lot more turned on than if I was with let's say a homosexual man so I really feel that there is a difference between the attitude I guess between um that and I think that that really helped me as well but I was always put in situations um, in high school in which I feel like it has definitely, you know, helped me identify myself a little bit more, but, um, yeah, I mean, so high school is where you tend to just really experiment and go all out, and I definitely did that. I, throughout all high school, was always going out and, you know, having fun and things like that. I remember this one time in particular where I had this gay friend who was actually my ex-boyfriend and we would always hang out and I mean we were cool like that and it was never anything sexual or anything like that but I remember one time specifically we were all hanging out and we were playing drinking games and things like that but it started to get really intense and my girlfriend who was there with her boyfriend um this is one of my friends who in particular I find to be um, one of the girls that I've always have, you know, looked up to, but at the same time, I've always had, um, and I've never, like, probably said this to her, but I always felt like I was a little bit jealous of her because she, like, just felt like, for me, like, she just had this perfect life. She was, like, the pretty girl in school, and, you know, every guy wanted her, and, I mean, what girl wouldn't want to be like that? So, I was just definitely always a little jealous of her, but, um, yeah, she was always, you know, had the cute boyfriends and stuff like that, and I definitely always, um, you know, I just looked up to her, and I always wanted that. I, um, remember that her and her boyfriend were leaving, and we were all drinking that disgusting Carlos Rosso or something like that, that big jug of wine, and we were all drinking it, and we were getting so fucked up, and I remember this, he was our friend in high school, and it was um, one of our close friends, and he was there as well, and for some reason he didn't end up leaving, I don't know if he came with them or not, but either way, it doesn't matter, he ended up staying, and he, it was, um, a couple of uh, us, there still actually and um for some reason we went upstairs and he I remember the straight guy saying that he wanted to see some gay shit and I was just like what is that supposed to mean you know so you know I don't want to get too into it we ended up all hooking up I know I'm a dirty slut and I remember my gay friend ended up just all of a sudden was not there and it was just me and this straight guy and he seriously like in one swoop ripped my pants off and took my shoes off at the same time like what like that was so crazy it was like kind of hot though I was like I knew he had a girlfriend and I didn't want to <laughs> I know drama so after high school I was doing hair for a while before I even started going to fashion design school and I remember I was starting to get <clears throat> a lot of anxiety and it was getting to the point where I was in and out of the hospital frequently and I always knew what the answer was going to be but for some reason I always thought I was dying. It's an, a mental thing and I it's a mental game and I think that sometimes your brain definitely can be overpowering and Sometimes with life, you get overwhelmed, and I think that I was having a little crisis. I definitely feel like the drinking was not helping. Like I said, I was definitely getting really into going out and partying and doing all of that during um, all of high school, and then even a little bit before my 21st birthday, um, I 
feel that I finally started calming down, down after that, but it went from house parties to going out to clubs and things like that. I remember getting to high school hungover and feeling like shit because we were out all night and we were getting home super late and had to go to school. Yeah, I definitely had my fun. I was exposed to a lot of different diversity amongst my own community within the LGBT Q, within the LGBTQ um, community, I definitely was able to be exposed to a lot more diversity just because um, I would go out so frequently and I first was exposed to drag queens. I admire them because it is a more of an art. These people are transforming themselves into literally another character and then on top of that they dance great. Actually, sometimes. But they dance great, they sometimes sing great, they just have a lot of talent. But for me, I was not... It wasn't a hobby and it wasn't a job, you know? This wasn't something that I just like, I I feel like this is me and I, if I was gonna be a woman that I want to be all a woman and I, and it's not like if I wanted to be, I am a woman and I want to present myself as so at all times, not just when I choose to and I think that is a misconception that a lot of people who are outside of the community could possibly have is that we are all kind of the same and there is a lot of differences between even, you know, somebody who I you can say is um, a cross-dresser to a drag queen. You can't even compare them, but all of these things are different and you can't really say that they're all the same and it's just amazing to even think how much of a um, variety and diversity amongst those subcultures <clears throat> there are. So um, yeah, I definitely feel that um, going out really helped me identify myself a little bit better because eventually as, as trans became more mainstream, I was really able to meet a lot of really incredible women who I find to be super brave and courageous to really go out and, you know, be determined and persistent on becoming who they truly want to be. And as soon as I came across, um, especially one person in particular, Nikki, shout out, I love you, let's hang out soon. She has definitely shined a lot of information to me and has really helped me at the beginning of my transition. Um, she's always been a good support for me, but I started to become a lot more exposed to trans women and that is when I really started to become a lot more curious about it and I never knew that there were options for trans women. I just have this image of some of a burly kind of male figure dressed up in women's clothing or, you know, it was just always portrayed like that in the media as something to be humorous or funny or, you know, it was always the the butt of the joke, you know, and I think that people actually feel this way and, I mean, I think that is just a version maybe of what someone who is trans and I definitely feel like that would probably be more so someone who is in the beginning process because, trust me, people soften up and definitely a lot of these um, images that were portrayed of trans women also were through things like Jerry Springer and those ridiculous um, TV shows. It's just crazy to think that now we have a lot more examples of people and it, it just shows that they come in all sort of varieties just like any other type of race or nationality or whatever, um, any kind of human. We, we come in all shapes, we come in all sizes. So after coming across a couple trans people, I definitely started a researching gender, which then led me to really educate myself in something that I 
found so interesting, to be honest. And sometimes I even consider really going to school for it or something like that because it is just so complex and I think it could really help people understand themselves. Even if you find yourself to be a cisgendered male, cisgendered female, cisgendered meaning that you identify with your biological sex, that doesn't necessarily mean anything about your sexuality. It just means really that you agree with what's in between your legs, really. I am considered heterosexual because I am a female and I am attracted to male. And somebody who is cisgendered doesn't necessarily have to be attracted to the opposite sex. So that is something that I find really interesting and that a lot of people probably don't even know. Um, but yeah, researching gender definitely helps you um, find cool things out like that. And uh, I think it's not just necessarily for people who are under the LGBT community, it is for everybody. All throughout college, I identified more as gender fluid, which is, um, a non-binary type of gender, which means that I don't, it, non-binary meaning um, it's not only boy and girl, it's more of a spectrum, um, and I like to say it's more like a masculine feminine, um, or feminine masculine, whatever, but there's uh, all this in between, and I think that gender fluid, you could be comfortable at any spot, and um, non-binary, like I said, it me just means that you don't identify as one or the other. Um, you could even be as far as um, intersex, but intersex has to do more with your genitalia, so that's more of like, um, if you're born with um, a genit genitalia that is um, ambiguous, I guess you can say, and um, so it's really hard to identify um, the sex at birth because they they can e be either or. So because gender is more of a mental thing, so um, yeah, like I said, it, it gets so complex. But um, yeah, I would identify myself as um, gender fluid throughout all of um, college and because I was able to experiment with my fashion and I was able to get away with it being that it was fashion design school, even if it wasn't fashion design school, to be honest, I would be wearing whatever I fucking want. But um, I definitely had, I, I feel like as humans, we have this need to identify with something and relate to something. And I feel like at the moment, that's what it was. So as soon as I graduated fashion design school, I moved out with a group of friends that I got really close with during school and we, um, you know, moved into the house I grew up in which was really awesome and um, I couldn't have, like, chose a better group to have done it with. We seriously slaved away during um, the beginning because we were trying to get it to the point where we can actually live in it, um, but yeah, I seriously had a lot of experiences with them that I feel really helped me um, grow as a person and I really learned a lot about myself throughout the whole time and that's what brings us to this present day. This has been such a nostalgic experience living back in my in the house that I grew up in. So and once we were finally able to settle into our new house, I quickly began to work. And I was working in Santa Monica um, at a Nevada salon for about almost a year before I stopped working. Um, due to back issues, I haven't um, been able to start working, but I definitely am missing it. And yeah, I feel that I've been having a lot of time to really think about a lot of things and and I've came to the realization about the beginning of this year after a lot of thinking I seriously had a feeling of like emptiness you know it was definitely something that I feel was a very strange feeling just because I always felt like there was something missing and I just never felt complete ever since coming out as being homosexual I just always was in and out of depression and had this intense anxiety for the longest time and I just was never able to really diagnose my myself and I definitely felt after having done my research and really educating myself on gender and sexuality and 
all of the differences between all of that I was really able to identify myself and it was just so freeing because I felt that I had found something about myself that you know it was like the missing puzzle piece and it's just really amazing that I have come to this point in my life and it is something that I feel inspires me to share it with everybody else and I just really hope that everyone who has been viewing my videos knows that I am super thankful and I appreciate the support and so now that you guys pretty much know my whole life I think it is safe to say that we are best friends so don't forget to add me on my social media I will definitely be keeping you guys posted with the new videos thank you guys so much for watching I appreciate all the love and support don't forget to like the video leave a comment or a suggestion and always subscribe don't forget to subscribe so that you get notifications on my next videos and i will be catching you guys very soon peace